Okay, so we're back for my first kind of intermediate to advanced tutorial. And I want to specifically speak about some things that I did not address about Mars. So as you can see, if you've watched my beginner tutorial series, I have expanded the base a bit here. Um, we have a fridge, we have this kind of air filter set up here. And I'm going to talk about having an advanced or maybe intermediate setup with the solar power um, that we have outside there so that it does actually do proper solar tracking on Mars, something that you don't need on the moon, but you do need it on Mars. The second thing that I want to talk about is this grow light. So on Mars, the sun doesn't actually give enough sunlight uh, to allow your plants to thrive like they are here. And I'm going to show you a very, very simple setup that allows you to have this switched on during the daylight automatically so that you don't need to manage it. And finally, I just want to talk about duct tape because that is something that's important on Mars as well. But let's start with the power setup. I'm going to grab my suit here um, as the sun is just about to rise. And we're going to get out here so that I can show you um, what this advanced setup looks like. Now, I did mention that in my initial setup that I didn't want to do the advanced setup because I felt like for a beginner player, if you've never dealt with the logic circuits, this just seems very complicated. And sometimes I just don't bother with it because of just how much power is generated by the solid fuel generator. But this is still useful if you don't want to deal with power all the time. And like this base, for example, doesn't really use enough power on standard, just on standby, even with all the lights and the fridge and everything else that I have. Um, for it not to be supplied by this setup, which now has really good tracking efficiency. Now, before I get into, this may look complicated, but in reality, it's actually very simple. And if you were using the IC assembly language coding, which you do get later on, it would actually be so much simpler to do this just because you don't need all of these chips. Um, and this setup will work no matter where you have positioned your uh, solar panels for the most part so what you have here is a daylight center and this uh, sensor and this is tracking the horizontal and vertical position of the sun but the problem that you have is on default if you were just to use a logic reader to get the position vertical and horizontal from the sun and then batch writers to write that over to these they would be tracking something they would be tracking a position but it's going to be off from the position of the sun in this case it's going to be off by about 90 degrees vertically and 90 degrees horizontally i think it's always off on mars by 90 degrees vertically but maybe it depends on the orientation of the solar panel i'm not a hundred percent sure um, of that but this setup as i said it's not really going to matter you can kind of figure things out and change them as you need to so I'm going to quickly run you through what each of these does. And we did briefly talk about this in the basic uh, tutorial, but each of these, the logic reader, the math unit, the batch writer, and one memory unit is going to correspond to getting the correct position for horizontal. So that's one set and vertical, which is the second set that I have here. I've used the labeler to label everything as A or B, uh, so that I know which one I'm referring to. So in my case, A is horizontal, B is vertical. You can set it up however you want. And if I go in here behind uh, the, the solar panels, you'll see that it is always facing the sun. So right now we should be at 99% efficiency, which is about as good as it gets. Um, and it creates about 500 watts per solar panel. So this is where you can see it's going to be about, what is that, 3000 watts for this setup which is still well short of the 20,000 watts that you can get from coal power. But of course, you don't need to keep feeding the system or set up an automated way to do it because the sun is going to rise every day. And this is kind of like guaranteed power that you're going to get. So what are we doing? I'm reading the position, in this case, horizontal. Instead of taking that straight to the batch writer, it goes to the math unit. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set up one to read the reading from logic reader A, which is a horizontal in this case, you're gonna add to that some number, which is gonna refer to one of your memory units. And this you can set up yourself. So this is the horizontal one, this is memory unit A, and I just wanna show you what this used to be on. So uh, it would be closer to zero. Um, you can hold down the C key if you wanna do smaller increments. 
And you'll see that if I just left it on default, it would be tracking some position over there. Now it is tracking that position consistently, but I could easily see when I had set this up that this is off by roughly 90 degrees. So you can just keep adjusting this. And this is how I came up with this number um, slowly until it gets to the value that you need it to have. So I can see, okay, if I reduce this value, it is be it's going closer to the sun. And I basically just kept on doing this until I could see, okay, now it is basically perfectly tracking the sun and it is at pretty much 100% efficiency or as close as we're ever going to get. And you do the same thing for vertical. Like I said, on Mars, I'm pretty sure that for vertical, it's always going to be on 90. So this is really simple. On the math unit, that's what it's drawing. It's taking from that memory unit and it is outputting that, um, sorry, it is using the function of adding here. So always the one that's on the left, the one that is highlighted green, that's what it's currently busy doing. The reason why I'm adding and not subtracting is because you can set up minus values in the memory unit like I have done here. And then finally, the batch writer is then going to reference the logic math. Which one is this? A? Uh, why is this referencing? Oh, it is re referencing logic math A. So this can very easily um, become confusing. It's always the one on the left. That's what you're currently on. The one on the right of the little tooltip here, that's what you can switch to next. Um, the variable that it's writing is going to be uh, horizontal. And then this needs to go to the solar panel dual. So all of this is connected to the solar panels. You can just link all of these together as long as they're powered and as long as it doesn't cross over into my output power here, power here which is on heavy watt cables. You shouldn't have any issues with it. The alternative is to just use heavy watt cables for everything, but at the beginning of the game, you probably don't want to waste those. So I don't know from a new player's perspective if this seems complex or not. The reality is if you write it down on paper, it is very simple what you're doing. You're literally just adding and subtracting to this value that you have here, the horizontal and vertical value, so that it matches the actual position of the sun um, relative to how the solar panels 360 degree horizontal spin and the vertical spin on it works. That's all you're trying to do here. Um, and you just need to make sure that that works. It just gets a little bit complicated if you're not familiar with these logic chips. So that's the solar power setup. And yeah, works pretty well. Um, at this stage, you'll see that we are going to get to full battery charge here. I have two station batteries set up here now. And with the amount of power like I'm, that I'm drawing, as I said, um, I don't really need to worry about this too much. Now, I quickly want to show you as well. You can see that the grow light, you can kind of see the, the glow from it on the side here. It is on and it is on while the sun is out. This is a super simple setup. So just ignore all the excess cable here because I tend to build stuff and break it down again. But really, you only need these three items. They're pretty cheap to produce. So you have a daylight center, uh, sensor and you'll see grid sunlight is currently on true. Now, all that this network does is the logic reader is reading this value um, and the, the variable that you're looking for is activate. So as soon as the sun goes up, activate's going to go to one. This is going to read that activate value and it's going to write it to the, and I can just show you where is my, oh, I do actually still have this. So you can see over here, um, we're referencing the logic reader, which is reading from the daylight sensor. The variable that we are on is just on and it is on the grow light. So it's just switching the grow lights uh, on variable to one when the sun is out and zero when the sun is not out. And it's that simple. And I'm just plugging this into the same power network that I'm using for the rest of my base. And this perfectly manages, I've tested this on the wheat and the soybeans in this case, and it perfectly manages the light levels for them. Last thing that I wanted to mention about Mars, and this is a really simple one, you are going to need duct tape. So, you know, unlike the moon, which doesn't have storms, you do get storms here and they will damage your solar panels. And to get them back into full functional order, uh, like we, I think this one was still a little bit uh, damaged. Let's just have a look here. Yeah, so the health is at 95%, damage is at 5%. All you need to do is you patch it with some duct tape. Uh, duct tape isn't particularly expensive to manufacture. You can manufacture it in the tool manufacturer, the one that we have at the back there. 
There are other slightly more exploity ways to get around this problem, um, or you can just build the advanced solar panels. I don't particularly like using exploits, so when I'm using the panels that are not uh, resistant to the storms, I just patch them. It's not that big a deal, especially on a small network like this. It probably takes a minute or two to do all of them. So I might be doing some more advanced tutorials. Let me know if you like this one or if you have any more questions, and I'll see you for the next video.